Good morning, Key Stage 2. OK, hello, everybody, and welcome. Wherever you might be doing your learning, could be at home, could be at school. OK, this morning, I thought we would talk about musical form and musical structure. And we'd have a look at seeing how composers have gone about taking their ideas and putting them into musical forms and musical structures. Last week, we had a little look at a composer called Haydn. And we had a look at trying to uh, trying to, to work out what Haydn had done with his musical ideas and how he developed them. And I'm just going to remind you of the piece that we looked at last week. Lovely. So that was Haydn's Andante from the Surprise Symphony. And last week we looked at how he took an idea and he developed it. Right. This time, what I want to do is I want to have a look at how many themes Haydn has in his piece of music. Now, Haydn starts off and he plays that rhythm. I can see you. Yes, I can. Which we looked at last week. If we call that A. We'd say Haydn has written his A theme. That's like his first musical idea. OK, so he's written his A theme. He then develops it and he messes about with it and he pulls it around and he does all kinds of things with it. But really, we would say that was Haydn's A theme. OK, it's like his first musical idea. Let's have a little listen just to Haydn's I Can See You theme. <laughs> Here it is, and it's developed. Then he repeats it. So that was all of his first idea, and now he plays it again. Haydn, the clever boy that he was, thought to himself, do you know what? My A theme's good, but my listeners might be getting a little bit bored. So what Haydn did was he thought to himself, I need a new idea. I'm going to call that idea B. This is going to be my new idea. It's going to be a little bit different to the A theme. The A theme was good, but the B theme's got to be a little bit different. So what Haydn did was he wrote this theme. was so good he repeated it. So Haydn's piece of music that we looked at last week and we're starting with this week, we'd say it had an A theme and a B theme. It only really had two ideas. So we'd say, in the form that we've just listened to it in, We'd say it was binary, binary, two ideas, a binary form piece of music, an A theme and a B theme. You might have been riding around at the weekend on your bicycle. OK, our prime minister likes to ride a bicycle. OK, something with two in the word by bi, binary. OK, two wheels on my bike, two themes in my binary composition. 
Now, this week, what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at how we can develop a composition and how we can develop musical ideas into a form. I'm going to play you an idea that a French composer had called Moray. Now, before we start, I'm just going to give you a little bit of history about Moray. OK, so his full name was Jean Joseph Moray, and he was born in 1682 and he died in 1738. OK, so we're talking quite a long time ago. OK, and that era was called the Baroque era, and slightly before the classical era. So just before we were looking at last week's composer and what Moray did was he wrote music. Um, for ballets and for plays and for things that were going on on the stage. Murray was, he was quite successful in his day. He was, he was pretty famous, OK? Perhaps not quite a rock star, but he was, um, you know, he was doing well. And then what happened was after Murray had died, his music sort of got a bit forgotten. And then suddenly in the 1960s, they needed something for a television um, programme, for a theme tune. And they decided that one of Murray's compositions would be really, really good. So they chose Moray's um, Rondo as a theme for a 1960s, uh, 1960s television programme called Masterpieces of Theatre. OK, and it goes like this. <laughs> Okay, now that would have been Moray's first idea. So we would call that Moray's A theme. Now, the first thing we're going to have a go at doing today, okay, is we're going to have a go at writing our own A theme. We're going to do it in the same way that we did it last week, okay? So, first thing we're going to do is we're going to come up with rhythm. So, I'm going to come up with mine. Now, mine's going to go like this I like birthday cake. Okay? Because I eat it every day. So I've come up with my rhythm. I can say it. I can play it. I can clap it. OK, I'm going to give you two minutes to do that now. So if you need to pause the video and come back when you've done that. OK, right. Hopefully you've come up with your your idea, your rhythm. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our instrument and we're going to try and put it onto our instrument. Now it might be that you're lucky. You've got your own keyboard at home or your own piano or your own violin, ukulele, whatever you've got. But it doesn't matter if you have it. You might have a piece of hand percussion or you might be using stationery. OK, whatever it is, you can make a sound with it. So my A theme, I'm going to put it onto my instrument and I'm going to try and use different parts of the instrument to change the sound. OK. That's my idea on the drum. I might be using a shaker. This is something you could improvise. You could have a tin can with some seeds in it. OK. Remember to try and change the way you hold things. Try and change the sound. You might have a bell stick left over from Christmas. Or you could be lucky enough to have your own ukulele or your own guitar. OK, so using the chords that we've studied in class, I'm just going to use blue, yellow and green and red. But whatever instrument you've got now, I'd like you to take the rhythm that you wrote your idea on and I'd like you to take it and put it onto your instrument. Take the words out now. So you're just using the instrument and you're just using the uh, just using the rhythm that you came up with. I'm going to give you four minutes to do that now. So if you need to, pause the video, OK, and come back to me when you're done. Right. OK, now we're going to call that theme A. We're going to call that theme A. So if I go back to my handle, uh, so sorry, my hidden from last week, his theme A was this one. If I look at the Murray, 
that we're looking at this week, okay, his theme A is this one. Okay, that's his theme A. Now, the next thing we're going to do to try and create a little bit of variation, a little bit of change for the listener, we're going to write a theme B. So now our composition should go theme A, theme B. Now, the theme B should be different to the theme A. So my A theme went like this. I like birthday cake because I eat it every day. My theme B has got to be totally, totally different. So if my theme A was about what I do like, OK, my theme B should be about what I don't like. I don't like spaghetti and cheese because it makes me weak at the knees. OK, right. Next job, then. What we're going to do is we're going to come up with a rhythm that works against our A theme. So if our A theme went, I like birthday cake because I eat it every day. OK, your B theme needs to be the opposite. I don't like spaghetti and cheese because it makes me weak at the knees. Man United are the best. They can beat all the rest. Who don't you like? OK, and I'll let you into a little secret. I don't follow football at all, so please don't think that I follow Man United. OK, I'm sure they're very good, but not for me. So the next thing you're going to do now, OK, I'm going to give you two minutes to do it, is you're going to write yourself an A and a B rhythm. OK, so I'm going to give you two minutes now. So if you need to pause the video, OK, have a go at writing your A and your B rhythm. OK, welcome back. Right. You've guessed it. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to take your instrument. OK, whatever it might be, it could be stationary percussion. It could be a ukulele, it could be whatever you want. And you're going to take your B rhythm and you're going to put your, you're going to put your B rhythm onto that instrument. So my one was, I don't like spaghetti and cheese because it makes me weak at the knees. And I'm going to take it and I'm going to put it onto my ukulele. And I was using the yellow chord there and the yellow and green chord there, both ones that we've looked at in class. So it would go. Now, if I go back to my original idea of A being my first idea and B being my totally opposite idea, OK, I've got that lovely idea of a binary composition. So let's have a look at my binary composition. So I'm going to do my A theme first, birthday cake. Played it once, so good, I'll play it again. Right, now, complete contrast, spaghetti and cheese. And I like it so much, I'm going to play it again. So what our original composers that we looked at last week did, OK, was they came up with an A idea. They came up with a contrasting B idea and they called that binary composition. Two themes, binary. Now, Moray was working in a time where composers weren't paid a great deal of money. So Moray had to come up with ideas and he had to make sure he, he got every ounce out of them before he could move on to his next one, because no one is an endless stream of ideas. So what Murray said was, I really like my A theme. I'm going to play it to you one more time. I'm going to remind you what it sounds like. <laughs>
So that was Murray's A thing. And what Murray thought was, do you know, I like it so much. What I could do is I could start off with my A theme. I could play it. People would love it. I could have a contrasting B theme. That's my binary form. OK, but then do you know what? The A theme is so good. I'm going to play it again. So he went A, then to B, then back to A. Now, they called this form ternary form because it turns around in the middle. It goes A idea, B idea, and then back to A. Right. Going back to my original composition about birthday cake and spaghetti and cheese. OK, I'm going to play my A, my B. And then go back to my A. And again. Now what I don't like. Now I'm going to go back and play my A again. So now my composition has gone from the A to the AB and then back to the A. So it's now become a ternary composition. Now Murray thought, I don't think I've quite exhausted my A theme yet. I think people would like to hear it again. So what Murray did was he started off and he said, A, I'm going to call that my theme. So I'm going to call that my theme. He then said, right, I'm going to have another idea and I'm going to call that binary. I'm going to call that binary. So two ideas, A, B. If I come back, that makes it ternary, A, B, A. And then I'll have one more idea and I'll call it rondo. And rondo form is going A, B, A. C, and then finishing finally on your A. So that A is so important. It's so important. Right, your next task then, and what you're going to be doing. You've got an A theme. You've got a B theme. Your next job is to write a C theme. And just to recap, I didn't use any chords other than blue, yellow and green and red. OK, I didn't use any other chords then. So they're all chords with covered in class. And what we're going to do now is we're going to put it into our rondo composition. So let's remember rondo goes A, B, A, C, and then finishes on that mega, mega important A. OK, that is the really important theme. So I'm going to play through my rondo composition now. So I'm going to go birthday cake. I'll play it again. Spaghetti and cheese. Play it again. Back to birthday cake. Now my new C. Finish with right. So today we've learned about Moray, our new composer. Okay, Jean Joseph Moray, our French composer.
OK, and we've learned about binary form, A, B. We've learned about ternary form, A, B, A. And then we've learned about how that's developed into rondo form, A, B, A, C, A. Now, you can either this week, you can either create your own rondo composition using your instrument. OK, or using your stationary percussion. It's up to you. Or you can create a poster that shows this musical form as like a musical sandwich. So if we had the bread on the bottom, the bread's like the A theme, then you might like to have a beef burger as your B theme. Then you're going to come back and you're going to have a layer of bread again as your A theme returning. Then you might like to have some salad and some lettuce and tomatoes as your C theme. And then finally, you'll finish it off with bread on the top to make that big Rondo burger. OK, right. I'm going to leave you now. I'm going to say goodbye. It's up to you this week whether or not you do a composition or if you want to do the uh, more literacy based activity of designing a musical sandwich. It's up to you. And I will see you all next week. Stay safe. Stay well. And I'll see you very soon. Goodbye.